Okay, so we have this 1989 Firebird, beautiful car, that we are going to do an install of the first TPI on. So we're going to start by disassembling this old original TPI and go from there. Like I said before, you always want to make sure it's the top dead center of the distributor and drain your fluids from the radiator. Disconnect the battery. Have it. That's pretty much all it is. It's got this nice crate motor from Summit in here with these Gore-Tec heads. This is a great addition. All up. And that's pretty much it for the teardown. Anyway, we're gonna clean this all up, dry fit the base, and uh, we'll go on from there. Like I said, it's kind of cool. It's got a Vortec base. Back replacement one, anyway. I said probably a skog and sticky. Curious to see what that looks like on the bench. Comparison to ours, maybe I'll take some pictures. Before and afters. Comparison pictures, I should say. So there you go. That's the teardown. The next thing we're going to do is clean it up. Dry fit the base, of course. Make sure everything fits nice. Clears everything. And then we will be... Putting the base on and routing our fuel lines and such. We'll go from there. And I want to go over the reason why we pre-fit again in this video, just so everybody understands. Um, in doing so, I'm going to use this stock gasket to use as an example to show you what I mean by clearance issues. So this gasket is quite a bit shorter because it's for a stock Corvette head. If you put this down into place, you can see Above here is about a half of an inch. On the Vortec head, this is clearly machined all the way up to the bottom of the valve cover. It's a taller port head. And when we make our bases, we make the base with this casting high enough to cover this head. So we actually have to machine the edge of it down to fit in between the valve covers on the you know earlier style heads. 
and the stock ones. And some of the aftermarket ones actually leave a ridge here as well. So we're kind of guessing when we do that, but um, we kind of know enough to get you close. But the bottom line is, is I just wanted you to visually see that, that this gasket typically on the Corvette is almost touching the bottom of the valve cover. So that gives you an idea on how much we have to remove just to get it to fit this, you know, port. But it keeps the cost down by having the base cast to, you know, machine out for each head. Um, just makes it easier. So I mean, hopefully that clears that up a little bit. That's very important to test fit this base to make sure that's clear. Because if you don't and it catches the ridge, it will leak out of these coolant passages. And then we'll get the email or you'll be upset saying, you know, I went through all this grief to put it together. And now it's leaking antifreeze out the front or the side and the angles off and this and that. Well, it's really not the angle. It's the... It's the fact that this ridge that you can't see on this head because they machine it all the way up because of the tall port is is low and it just doesn't fall between there. So hopefully we get it right for you, you know, when you order it and you don't have that issue, but it's still something you need to check. Also, we went over the oil pressure sending unit. I'm going to show these fittings again. Two different types. There's a larger one and a smaller one. You can visually see size difference they're both eighth mpt it's just that the size is much different so you want to definitely make sure you you know use the smallest one possible to make it easier for the base obviously because that runner comes over as we discussed in the last video and kind of hits the sending unit the way it's factory mounted this particular engine has been moved down to the port above the oil filter so it's just plugged. Um, they must have did that when they put the Scoggins base, Vortec base on here originally. So we don't have to worry about that. But I just wanted to touch on that because that's important. Also, now I'm going to go over, you know, your basic installation of the base. So what you're going to end up doing is putting a, a bead of silicone, Permatex, along the china walls here. I usually go, you know, eighth in, or quarter inch to three eighths of an inch thick, all the way to the gaskets. Set the gaskets in. No silicone on the gaskets to the head, just in the corners. Once you set the gaskets into the silicone, then I like to put a little bit of a dab on the corners just to make sure that it seals over the top. Um, then after you get that in place, you set the base down and torque it. And you're good to go from there. Once you have that all torqued, you go to the fuel system, fit the fuel rails, do your modifications to that, start lining things up, which is what we're going to do when we come back. Okay, you see I started putting the gaskets in. There's a you know, quarter-inch bead like I was showing you. Silicone. Take the... Gasket, make sure you set it into the silicone. And I always like to put these up to the corner like so. Make sure it's up on the gasket. And then we carefully set it down. And that's it. Make sure it's in place. If you want to get it close, you don't want to have to slide it around. You can take a bolt if you want to and just, you know, see how easy that slid. You can check it. You want to be careful, not move it too much. You can just make sure it's where it's got to be. There you go. We put the bolts in and we torque them down and 
That's all there is to it. And there you go. The bolts in by hand. Now we'll just go around and we'll torque them and move on to the fuel system. You can see that I put the rails and the fuel injectors on on the bench. It's just easier that way. Um, I didn't feel like we should waste time showing you how to do that. It's pretty self explanatory. Basically, you take the injector o ring, you put a little oil on it, lubrication, WD 40, anything, pop them into the holes, pop the rails on. And then just tighten them down, and that's all you got to worry about. Um, and that's about it. You, there, there's no crossover for EGR in here. This bolt here that you guys will see is an EGR passage from when the EGR was intact. It would go up and jump to the plenum. You'll see another one. Well, you'll see where it would have went in the bottom of the plenum. It came behind the throttle body, and it came up inside the plenum. But we don't do that no more. That's all cord shut. In the future, we're probably going to lose that whole inside piece uh, and make that plenum all flat inside. Uh, but currently, we're just not coring it. Again, that went with cost issues. Um, when foundries and stuff started raising their prices and aluminum went up and all that stuff back in the day, uh, we chose to eliminate EGR because of the use of it. There wasn't many of them being ordered. So we figured we could keep the cost relatively the same by eliminating that EGR. Some of the older ones still have the passages. We can make the passage coupler for you if you need us to. So if you get your hands on one, you can still do it. All right, I'm gonna get these torqued and I'll be back when we uh, do the fuel system connections. I also just wanna touch, touch on the distributor. I will set that now too, when I go to do my fuel system, just to make sure there's no clearance issues and stuff like that. All right. So I'll uh, be back with the fuel rail routing and lines. All right, back on the 89 Trans Am fuel system. Uh, to kind of show you what I did here. So I got the adapter from the in, from the pump to a 90, two hose to the rail. Made sure there was a clearance between there to get air there so it doesn't get too hot. I left the clamps, you can see they're smooth band. I left them silver. I will make those black with a Sharpie. It works out real sweet. Uh, makes them disappear, believe it or not. And your Sharpie, you can touch them up if you need to. So I used a 90 there, 45 there. Went down the rail to the crossover. Cross to the other rail. Down this rail. The straight fitting, 90 to the regulator. The reason why this is not connected is because I have to have it loose when I put the throttle position sensor on because it has to be done, has to be pushed down. My extended wobble wrench comes underneath this regulator gauge to tighten that up. But it will go into here to the regulator, out of the regulator, down, Cross back to another adapter to the return side so that it basically adapts that. This is just the water temp sensor, which will go here, but I don't want to put it in there because I want you to see how that was, because this has got to be moved down, and then the temp sensor will go in there. Made a little bracket for this fuel pressure regulator to mount to the back of this AC pump to that bolt. So the bracket just is like a, a little zigzag bracket, mounts to the back of the fast regulator. Holds it into place real nice. This vacuum I put a 90 on. This line is going to go underneath the runners and kick back up to this eighth inch port. 
Also, while I'm here, I'm going to show you this kick down cable. On these from the factory, they wrap around the back of the distributor. Come on this way. To make it reach, you just got to go underneath the plenum like this, and it comes up under there, and it actually fits real nice. I'll show you that. It seems a little snug, which it is, but it works. It doesn't put any tension on gauges or not gauges, but uh, the cable. I've been running it on my 87 Trans Am that way for, geez, 20 years now. No problems, no angle issues, no, no stress, no premature wear. But anyway, we'll go over that when I make the connections. You can see I have these three runners in place here. <clears throat> the reason being is because I want it to fit the plenum and throttle body, check for clearance issues, plus I have to fire up pressure to the rails before I put the plenum on it because I want to check for leaks and make sure nothing leaks that I did. So that's a very crucial thing. Um, I'm also going to leave these on, and I'm going to show you that little trick. On my first video, I kind of put them on all individually for you just so you can see how it's done that way. This way is like a shortcut, makes it easier to get them all started. And then you can, you know, set the plenum in with these on and then put that back right runner on at the end. But we'll go over that shortly when I build the top half. I just wanted to isolate the fuel system and how that was run to give you guys a really good overview of it. All right. So we are back to the plenum install. So as I told you the last time, I left these runners in place because I wanted to show you that you can kind of get them all started like this. It's a little easier for some people to do it this way. That way, they're not messing around with trying to balance the plenum with the runners when they're putting the gaskets and stuff on. Essentially, all you have to do is bring this in on an angle. You can see that I got the detent cable run here across the front and under the plenum because you need that length on this to get to the bracket. The factory runs them behind there and comes around and it's just, it won't reach, it's tight. So you just kind of diagonal it across there and you should be good to go, which I'll touch on that when I do the uh, throttle connections. I'm gonna just plug in the intake air temp and then I'm gonna go like this. You can see you left them a little loose. You set it in there, now it's set there. Essentially now you can just come back and bring each runner gasket in. Like so. And like I said before, just kind of put them up there loosely, especially like this because you need to be able to slide all the gaskets in. And again, my favorite choice of tools is this T-handle wobble, extended length. It's a great tool for this install. We also love this, of course. socket version super handy that way as well you can see how the plenum just kind of sits there don't have to move it much to get the bolts going Definitely good to have the wiggle room though. So this way, like I said, you're not really trying to fumble with balancing the plenum while you're putting the gaskets on and such. Still another way to do it. Just depends on the person putting it together and what they feel like messing around with. So 
once you get them all started loosely like I said and you can come back and torque them to 80 inch pounds Again, it's just a little easier when the plenum's not on there to, you know, get those bottom ones started with the gaskets. That way you can see them better, see them clearer. Like I said, the, the cross bolts are a little easier to be started when the stuff's not in the way. Things like that. So that's a way you want to try it. That's going to probably work good too. Slide it in there and move it around. Like I said, with these ones back by the fuel rail, you just leave the washer on the end so you clear the fuel rail. And then you'll be good to go there. And of course, always make sure you got the gasket in place. Double check that because I've taken part these systems behind other people and found gaskets twisted around, not in, in alignment, things like that, which is not good if you don't want vacuum leaks anyway. And as I said before in the other video that these are magnetic, these Stainless steel fasteners are of a magnetic grade, so you can use them. They're not like super sticky magnet, but if you get a, a decent magnet, you can pick them up if you drop them. And the washers. It uh, can be done. So don't worry about that if you drop them down. So there you have that part. So once you get these all in place, you go around, you tighten them up, break out a little inch pound torque wrench, and you torque them to 80 inch pounds. But like I said, always try to make sure you get them as get them all started by hand loosely get them close because you know obviously you don't ratchet the inch pound torque wrench well you're not supposed to ratchet any torque wrench really but you shouldn't make a habit out of it you bring these up and that's about Again, this is the torque wrench that I use. It's an inch pound wrench. It's just kind of like a regular old swing type. Set this little dial 
this blue arrow when you bring it over it touches off and you know you're there Example of torque. There you go. There you go. So basically, that's it. You're going to go around and torque all of them to spec. Once you do all of them, you just go back and just double check and make sure that you got them. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that. I don't need to do video time on that one anymore because that'll just waste time. And people don't want to watch long videos really on YouTube, and I don't blame them. So this is the fuel pressure regulator part. I got new valve covers that are going on this that match this, so that's why I don't have the wiring plugged in because I wanted to make sure I get the access to all these. Um, when I'm done with that, I'll push these back, plug in all the wiring. Um, like I said, with the, the TPS, the IAC, sometimes you have to pull these out of the loom to stretch them and reroute them to the idle air control just so they'll reach. Um, Otherwise, a lot of people I've talked to have cut these and extended this harness. You don't have to do that. It will reach. I'll show you that when I put the throttle body on. I'm going to do that, that whole uh, throttle body and cable connection on the next video just so we can concentrate on that because that's a, another one that people have a lot of difficulty with fuel lines and throttle cable connections. And it's not really that difficult, so I figure if I show you guys more of a detailed you know video of that you'll be able to understand it a little better but then I'll show you that this will reach the IC and all that um, so I guess that's all we're gonna go over for right now and we will touch back when I'm doing the throttle body all right so the other thing I want to touch on real quick before I forget again is this Passenger lower runner bolt. You have to put sealant on that runner bolt when you put that in. Um, it's important because that goes into a coolant passage and you don't need to have a leak from that bolt. It, it will drip out of there if it's pressurized. So make sure you uh, double check that as well and don't forget to do it. Okay, so we are back ready to put the throttle body on this 89 Trans Am. I just wanted to uh, show you guys right here that this is a idle air control valve harness I was talking about. I don't know if you can see it very good or not, but you can see I did not extend this harness. It's factory. Um, it did come out here with the other ones, the TPS and the coolant. I just opened this up. You split it back so you can pull it back here because ours comes in the back. And GM's comes from the side. So basically you take this, you push it be behind the runner. Push your harness down. Slide it up under here. And you can clearly see you have plenty of room. So where that's going to fit. Now, we'll go ahead and put that in. Hook up our PCB. This is our breather. Goes to the front. And we'll go ahead and mount it up.
this is what I was telling you about. You have to have the TPS bracket off so you can get this bottom bolt in here. You gain access to it. And of course, our wobble. Again, this tab you push all the way down and make it parallel with the plenum. Don't want to go up too high, especially on the Corvettes. We had a gentleman call and say that tab actually here's hooked, which is not a good thing. Those cars are very tight on the C4, so we get every centimeter we can out of them. Otherwise, it don't fit. But that's a whole other install coming soon. So these bolts get torqued to 132 inch pounds. Then with my torque wrench, I like to do a diagonal. And that is that. All right, so this is the bracket we have to. down for the throttle position. As I said, we had to leave the hose loose so we could get to this bolt. Tighten it up. Stout. So you just thread that on there. Tighten that. Then we will put the throttle position sensor on. And with this, you want to make sure this tab goes on top of that tab.
little tight and fat fingers. But if you're patient, you'll get it. It's pretty much the key. Patience. And of course, we will be adjusting this when we go to start it. So you don't have to get too carried away with it. There we go. Loosen this up a little bit. Again, you're going to be adjusting this anyway. So we'll be changing that as long as this is on the tab properly. You're in good shape. Because if you don't have it on the tab, obviously it's not going to work. And that's not going to make you very happy. But you'll see that when you go to set it. <clears throat> now you can either set it with a scan tool or you can probe the back of these wires to get your 0.65. And you just make sure it comes up, which it does. Everything's working fine there. From here, I will install the spring. Connect this trans cable, make sure it goes all the way to open throttle, which it does. Um, there are some concerns about the angle sometimes with customers, but truthfully, uh, the angle is fine. I've had it on my Trans Am for 20 years now. I never had any wear or nothing like that. As long as this goes open all the way, you're good to go, which it does. Um, these have to be adjusted. You push this pin this flat in and this will move in and out so you have to make sure you do that I can actually show you that so if I push this in on the side you'll see I can push it all the way back or I can push it all the way forward usually they will self lock see how it just clipped that's how you adjust it Pretty simple. Turn spring on. Like I said, you can kind of see it just taps off on that. It's okay. Doesn't really do any damage or make it stick or anything like that. And the cable, I will show you this. Oh, on this, sometimes this isn't cut out. There's a cutout on one side and not on the other. It's really simple. You just take a razor blade, you push it down, push it down on each side, and it makes a little V. Take that little piece out, remove it, and then it'll fit right into the bracket. Right with the two slots. And obviously this is for crews. So we're going to Put a long pin on here. I'm going to show you how to cut this end off and adjust it. This is the end we're going to put on. It's a low car part, S1038. You basically cut this T off. You slide this onto the cable and you tighten these set screws. This in turn will go on to that pin. This will go on to the long pin. And then you'll have your throttle and cruise. So what I'm going to do is go to the lathe. I'm going to turn down a pin. 
I'll mount it on here for you. Cut the cable off. Make these connections so you can see exactly how that's done. And that will be our next video clip. All right, I wanted to go over this throttle cable end connection and modification just so people can kind of get an idea. Some cars are going to have this end on it where there's a T. That just basically needs to be cut off. And then it gets replaced with an eyelid, which looks like this, right here. So this particular part number is S.1038 from Low Car. They do sell them. If you have a hard time locating one, give me a buzz. We can get you one too. But anyway, we're going to cut that T off and we're going to slide this on couple important things you need to know is how, how to set the length. You, you basically, you're going to pull a cable out. Like right now it's in this resting position, close throttle. You're going to pull this cable out. And you're going to see that basically we're going to just cut the T off at the very end. But it's also important to make sure that you check full throttle like this all the way by hand because you don't want the cable to get pulled farther than full throttle because if it does it will bend this break it whatever it has to do to get it to stretch so you want to make sure you adjust that properly because if you don't you're going to have a future problem with anything you can see that this is the end we sell the long one because the cruise is going on here it fits both there's little clips that go into these grooves that hold that apart Essentially, it's really simple. You take this end, and you cut the T off. Then you put the cable in through here. And I like to twist it because these cables, they get like little burrs. And basically you push it all the way in, you connect this, you tighten those two screws. When you check everything, make sure the length is proper at full throttle and at close throttle. You pop the clip on, put the screws cable on, pop the clip on, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, that's how you make the cable in fit the throttle arm some guys don't need a long one they got just a regular short pin you can buy those just like from summit wherever um, put those on sometimes that hole has to be drilled out don't be afraid to do that GM did make some like on my 87 Trans Am that are unboltable and they already have an eyelet on the cable this bracket was designed off of that GM bracket off of my 87 Trans Am um, since this bracket design, we have, you know, obviously there's a bunch of different configurations out there. There's three different configurations that I know of anyway that were on the TPI engines. So each one's going to be different. You're going to have to, you know, put the corresponding pin on it and end on it that, that works best for you. Um, if you have problems during your install, you know, we're here. Call, email, anything you know, just contact contact me. I install these a lot. I have all these on my vehicles from uh, hot rods to trucks to my Trans Am to, you know, anything you can think of, we've installed them on. So I've pretty much been through all different configurations and can help you out immensely on that. Um, you know, same with this, you know, detent like we touched on before. You know, when you connect this underneath the plenum and go back and people like, they look at this cable and they're like, oh, it's kind of like on a weird angle and everything. All you got to do is pull this cable and you can feel that it's smooth. You know, it's not under any kind of stress whatsoever. It's meant to be, you know, stretched around things. You don't want tight, you know, bends in it, but a gradual is fine. So that's nothing to be afraid of. Just like this pin, you know, some people prefer to have it perfectly straight out. You know, I've had my Trans Am, 20 years I've had it. I got probably 100,000 miles on that car since I put it on. 
I've never had any wear on that cable, but you're going to run into people that, you know, think that that's a problem and, and that's their prerogative. If, again, if you want a longer pin, I'll be more than happy to make it a longer pin and send it to you. Um, when you order the manifold, same thing. Order them with crews. I'll, I'll make sure you have a pin with it. Things like that. But uh, it's really not a hard thing to do. These cable ends are really simple to put on. Like I said, you just clip it and you're good to go. Um, we touched on the last video with the low car cable. And that was a cut to fit length. That's worst case scenario if you don't have anything that, that works OEM. But hopefully this kind of takes some of the you know, mystery out of connecting the cable in. It's not really that difficult. And like I said, the important thing is to make sure you check full throttle and close throttle. Make it perfect both ways. And you'll have many years of happiness with that setup. It's not a problem. So that's the last connection we really have to make here. Um, and then I'm going to... Uh, Actually, I'm going to show you how to connect that boot to the mass airflow, just so you can see that it does work on the OEM boot. Okay, I just want to show everybody that this boot, the OEM boot, will definitely work. Some people sometimes struggle with that, but you can see that it will stretch around. And... It will actually put a little force behind it. It will bend into shape and fit. So we can obviously put the screws in. You can actually see that this part here will go right on. No problem. So definitely you can use your cold air intake in most scenarios. Um, I know there's been some people that said that they've struggled with that. I'm not sure um, of every single application. Like I said, there's multiple different connections and stuff out there from GM. So basically all I can tell you is every one that I've used, I've been able to reuse the cold air from the factory. Um, you know, sometimes if it's super tight here, you can trim this back a little bit, get a quarter inch, maybe free it up a little bit, um, things like that. Other than that, I just wanted to make sure I touched on this to show you that that would work. Uh, basically, we're pretty much wrapped up here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and check the fluids, fill up the coolant, hook the battery back up, and then I'll get it fired up and show you guys a video of it running hopefully uh you know you guys will learn something from this video and we'll go from there the important part is is to always remember to um call us when you got questions or uh, run into something that you think is a problem because it's typically been already done uh, we've been selling these and i've been installing these for 20 years so um I again did not design this thing. Uh we I found it at a swap meet myself and bought it back in 2000 and uh I liked the intake the way it performed so well. I I I searched out who had it shelved and I you know proceeded to purchase the tooling to make it and I've pretty much done it like I said in many applications so I can help people with a lot of fabrications and stuff. It's not really that difficult of an installation. I know some people get twisted around on it because they're not familiar with fuel line adaption and, you know, maybe cable lens, but it's really not a, you don't need to be a magician to do this. Um, I mean, I've had guys that have taken these to mechanics and literally they, they haven't been able to work through it. So I don't know, you know, what the deal is out there, but just make sure you find a proper mechanic, make sure you find you know, somebody that's trustworthy and somebody that knows what they're doing and is very thorough. Um, and don't ever hesitate to have a mechanic call me. I mean, I have no problem talking to them. I know some mechanics think they don't need help, but I've ran into a lot of them that do. I, I am always asking questions before I do things. If, if I know somebody has been there, I'm going to call and ask that question. Anything related to our product, you definitely need to call us because if don't modify it, don't assume 
give us a buzz. I'm here. Uh, if I don't answer, so we're, I'm a working shop. So if I'm working and I can't get to the phone, I will return your call. Just leave a message. Also, be sure to chop an email. I mean, I'll do email. I have an email go to my cell phone. So if I'm out and about lunch, whatever, and I get an email and it's a quick help, uh, you know, I can shoot you a quick email back. I can't always talk on the phone. So um, just as long as you guys, you know, use the resources that I offer, I don't think you'll have very pro very many problems putting this system together. And yeah, my next video is going to be the Trans Ant or the, I'm sorry, the Corvette. So that'll be an interesting video for the Corvette owners. Pretty much going to go the same way. Um, there's really not much difference between these cars, technically. I mean, the installation of them, intake manifold perspective anyway. So watch for that. Um, if there's anything that I didn't touch on that you guys think you need to know, let me know. Comment on it or, you know, send me an email or give me a call. I will uh, answer it the best I can. So hopefully this video has been informative and it'll help a lot of people, you know, understand what's involved with it and maybe also help a lot of people be a little bit smarter when they're dealing with mechanics and uh, people of the professional side so they know what to get into. This installation shouldn't take anybody more than, you know, if you're working on it, you know, eight hours, I would say 10 to, you know, if you're struggling, 20 hours, but that's really pushing it, especially on a car like this where all the fuel systems already ran. But then again, I do these and I know my way around things. So, you know, it's a little, maybe it's a little easier. I don't know for me, but I feel that it's an easy swap for a, a person of basic mechanical ability. I feel that they can do this swap on a, a weekend um, for the most part, just the intake swap. I mean, if you get into heads and all this other stuff and camshaft, obviously it's longer. So watch for uh, the Corvette video and hopefully this helps somebody. All right, so here it is. Outside running just before its initial test drive. Beautiful car. Kitten. Idle and nice and smooth. Sounds really healthy. so I can show you underneath. Oops. 